Hi, and welcome to Order Up with Chef Eric. Uh, Chef Eric Durst is going to take us through the fabrication that is butchering of a few different meaty main courses here. So if you're having a holiday dinner, maybe maybe making something special for a potluck, um, this is a great way to save a little bit of money and then also be resourceful with what you've got, right? Sure, sure. All right, so we're going to start with the chicken. Yes, we're going to do uh, three different items today, uh, a beef tenderloin, uh, frying, roast, whole roaster chicken, and then a Scottish farm raised salmon. Um, a couple benefits real quick just to doing it yourself. Um, definitely, like you mentioned, saving money. Um, also, too, you can kind of utilize the meat for what you need it to. You don't have to depend on buying it off the rack or, you know, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, the bone-in items, such as the chicken, you can save the carcass for, say, making your chicken stock, and then you have the different cuts of meat. Also, too, um, you can also process the whole products and then portion them and freeze them the way you like it. Um, that way you know you got it fresh, you processed it yourself, you wrapped it, you know it's in the freezer, when it went in the freezer, as opposed to, say, buying store-bought where you're not too sure of its background. Okay. So basically three items. Uh, I do have three knives with me, a butching knife, a French knife, and a slicer as well. Um, they're all, you could use technically any of the three to do the whole job, um, but I like to do different knives for different types of things. Okay. Um, so basically we're going to start with the whole fryer. Um, basically just a nice farm-raised chicken. Mm -hmm. um, there's a couple different ways you can do this. Uh, one thing you could do is if, say you just wanted to do a half roasted chicken. You would basically just run your knife right down the center. Mm -hmm. The chicken would split open and then you'd see the backbone, which you would see the spine and stuff attached to. You basically just want to take that backbone out blam you got two side chicken you got two half roasters very very simple okay. uh, what we're going to do is we're actually going to clean it down into an eight piece cut which would be a wing a breast a drum and a thigh so technically being an eight piece you get two wings two breasts two drums two thighs so that's what we're going to do with this today okay. uh, simplest thing to use for this to start with would be the boning knife we're going to start breast up we're just going to run down when you run your front your finger down there you'll feel the breast bone uh, it's kind of right Feel right oh, front. there it is. Yep. Right, and then the meat, that's your centering point. So you want to start right off to the edge. Now, one good tip to remember when cutting meat, especially with the bone, you want to keep the blade of the knife pointed towards the bone, kind of using the bone as, say, uh, your guide. Okay. Uh, that way you're not getting into too much meat. Okay. So basically I have the knife pointed at the breastbone, and I'm just running it along following the bone. Now, once you get down so far, you'll see the breastbone will end. And then the, the, uh, you'll see it'll get down toward the bottom of the breast. Uh, tenderloin is still attached. Um, some people buy, uh, you know, just chicken tenderloins in the store already fabricated. I've seen them as high as four, three ninety nine, four fifty a pound. Right. Um, whole fryer chickens, you're looking at around a buck and a quarter yeah. per pound. So yeah. definitely a big difference as far as, you know, time save and yeah. money. So when we get down there, we run. Now, what you're going to do to... When you get down, you got that bone, you got pretty much got that whole breast separated. Yeah. You can see the carcass right there. Mm -hmm. So at this point, you can do a couple of different things. One, since we're doing an eight piece fryer, we're going to split it right inside the thigh. So you see the thigh, it basically, you know, self-explanatory, it'll join right down at the hip. You're going to take that. And what you're going to do is you're going to open it up. You'll see the drum and the thigh. This is the thigh, this being the drum. So we're going to take that, we're going to split that. And actually, if you give it a little pop, oh, you'll, hear, you'll, hear, you'll hear the hip joint pop out of there or from the thigh separating from the hip. So there's the bone. We just run it across there, and we have a leg. Thigh still leg. attached. Okay. Now, this one will take some practice. You can usually just run the knife right down through it if you get it between the cartilage between the two bones. It does take a little practice. Usually, it just runs on an angle just above no, it's kind of tough to see, but you see this little strip of fat mm -hmm. usually goes just inside of it. And I hit it right on a button. Okay. Went right through. That's cartilage, bone and bone, separated nicely. Okay. Okay, so now we got that side off. So now we're left with the breast, which is still attached to the wing. Now, some people do, you can buy such thing that's called an airline breast, which hmm. is the wing bone is attached which would be this right here. This is called, it's considered an airline breast because the wing's oh, attached because, to it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so we have the breast off. You can take it off in one piece. If you want to leave it attached, that's fine. Um, it'll take a little bit longer to co cook naturally because the joint's in there. But if you want to do, like we said, what we're going to do is the eight cut. 
you just go ahead. You go right through the bone there. Yep. That knife is just... Right through that cartilage. If you nice hit knife. that cartilage perfect, it goes mm -hmm. right through it. Okay. And then we have our four pieces, like I said, too. If you look down in here, you'll see the spines. Mm -hmm. If you would split that back off, you would get the two half chickens. It okay. would go right down the center. Mm-hmm. So we'll just do it on the other side. This is my first time ever... Yeah. seeing this done or doing it. I'm it takes some old. practice. 30 years old, I've never... Yeah, it that. takes some no practice. A nice thing to practice yeah. on, though, is definitely chicken because it's very cheap. Yeah. And, you know, if you, if you you know, if you slip here and there, no big deal. Right. You know, chop it up, make soup. Right, yeah, good point. So we got that breast started again, right down in the thigh. Give it a little pop, you'll hear it. Mm -hmm. You'll see the bone kick up. Right around the bone, thigh and drum, split them up. Two more pieces. Take it down, there's our carcass. There's our wing. And here, we have an eight piece chicken. Okay, really very not nice, that bad. Very, very nice simple. chicken, four to five pounder, huge mm -hmm. pieces of meat. These yeah. are probably one pound breasts, um, nice size wings. Now naturally, depending on the recipe, a whole fryer works good for chicken cacciatore. Okay. You can flour them up, saute it off, roast it with some tomatoes and some onions, throw it in a pot, braise it, throw it in the oven, works great for it. However, say you're doing, say you want to do, say, a bunch of fried chicken legs. You mm -hmm. wouldn't buy a whole fryer chicken and cut down because you're only going to take these and what are you going to do with all this? Right. So really, like I said, you could slice these down into some medallions, roll them up and portion them. You could throw the wings in a bag once you get a dozen, then do cook them off, right? Yeah. The thighs and the drums, if you want to make fried chicken out of them, great. Carcasses, you could hack it up, a couple pieces, throw it in a bag, freeze it, pull it out next time you need to make chicken stock. It's good to go. Okay. Very simple, probably the easiest of the three. Okay, yeah. Um, and then we'll get washed up, and next we'll get on to the salmon. All right, Jeff, so you've taken us through the fabrication of a chicken. we got an eight-piece chicken there, and now we're moving on to this guy, this this whole salmon, right? And we're going to fabricate this. Correct. This is a, uh, this is a Scottish farm-raised salmon. Okay. Um, you're not going to find, say, a whole salmon in your average grocery store. Right. Um, they can, a lot of places could order you one. They do get fresh seafood in a couple times a week. If you pre-order it, they can get it for you. Um, some of the benefits to doing a whole salmon is, again, naturally someone that really loves salmon uh, because you are going to get a good amount of steaks off of it, um, fillets, whatever have you. Um, so, but... You know, you can also control portion size with it. Say you wanted to cut some four ounce steaks for your lunch, or you want to cook some six to seven ounce steaks for dinner, or if you just wanted to roast the whole side, you could leave the whole side and just do it like that and then cut it down after it's cooked. Okay, so if you're having a big dinner, you could right. buy one of these babies. That Absolutely. would be a good idea. And then if you want to just have it for yourself, then you Correct. fabricate it, you get fabricate. it. Fabricate, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll do, you could both do both, leave skin on or off. Okay. Um, some people do cook it with the skin on. It tends to retain some of that moisture as opposed to running out okay. um, now when you do cook it the skin removes very easy you can peel it okay. off with your fingers right. so some people actually have trouble skinning the salmon when it's raw mm -hmm. so I recommend just cut it leave the skin on after you cook it it peels right off I feel like I've eaten salmon in a restaurant it kind of just if they leave yes. the skin on the bottom it just slides right, right. off yes exactly. exactly okay okay I do love salmon so, so. Uh, basically we have the same nice as we had for the chicken uh, we're okay. gonna we're, there, there's actually a couple ways to do it um, to retain the most meat is a little bit more complicated way, so we're going to kind of do a variation of both. Okay. Um, we have the boning knife, we have the French knife, we have the slicer, and we also have a pair of tweezers. Um, a pair of, uh, um, you could use a pair of hemostats, a pair of tweezers, uh, whatever you have laying around. You can pick them up in any medical shop, whatever. Uh, perfect for removing the pin bones, which we'll show you how to do as well. Okay. Oh, also, can I just ask how sure. much one of these would cost? Um, roughly, if you're buying, say you buy full salmon steaks, already portioned, frozen, you're anywhere from 4 to $6 per pound. Okay. Uh, buying a whole one like this, depending on the price, it fluctuates. You're anywhere between two seventy five and three twenty five a pound. Okay. So anywhere so pretty roughly around $2 per pound you're saving by doing it yourself. Okay. And you also know what you're getting. Right. 
Right. Okay. So what we're going to do first is we're going to start with around the head. Okay. Um, not very hard, uh, not a whole u use for the head for, say, your average customer, mm -hmm. um, but you will find in a lot of Asian cooking and stuff, they do use the head for different types of stews and stuff like that, um, a little bit more out-of-the-box type cooking. Mm -hmm. um, we're just basically going to discard it. Um, you could, if you wanted to make save the carcass for, say, some salmon stock, if you wanted to make some salmon broth or a soup or something like that, you could save it for that. Salmon broth. Never heard of that. Yes. Uh, okay, so what we're going to do is right behind one of the uh, side fins up front behind the head, we're actually going to start, we're actually going to cut towards the head on an angle right behind it. And we're going to run in, and once you're going to go down in until you feel the spine. The spine will run by, down the back of the fish, and there's also one in the center. So the one in the center naturally would run down the middle, and then there's also some cartilage up here that runs down the tail. Okay. So we're just going to run right on an angle mm -hmm. until we get down to the center. Now what you want to do is roughly, you just want to kind of guesstimate on the back side of the fish. Just start running right. down that bone We're just there. going to run right down it. And we're going to go on each side of the fin. And we're basically going to separate it. What we're going to do is we'll spin it around so we can show them, like I said, just right down the center. So you found that bone, yes. right, with the bottom of it. There's head. also, you'll see some uh, cartilage in here, as well as some pin bones running down. So if you're on the right side of these, you actually hit it pretty good. You're on the right side of the bones. But really, it doesn't matter, because once we get the sides off, we can we can take out the rest of the pin bones, anything we might have type of, we might have missed. So we want to want to work around this fin a little bit. And again, don't be don't be super afraid. You're gonna slip the first few times. Yeah. It's no big deal. We really don't clean them a whole lot anymore, um, just for the fact that saves on labor. You know, it's it's really not that big of a price point for us. We just buy whole sides where we just gotta skin them and clean them up, basically. Yeah, yeah. So there. Yeah. Now we have a nice, nice, uh, in nice cut, cut from the top. Started with that. We're gonna go with the one big cut. Now, can you can you buy a whole fish like this at, at Peachin? Um, you could, they could order you one in. Okay. Um, they, they don't carry them on stock just for the okay. simple fact a lot of people don't buy whole fish. Right, um, it's not an in demand. Right, product. right. But yeah. like I said, if you wanted to get one for say Christmas or Thanksgiving, and you could order a whole one up. Um, a lot more popular cuisines. Um, New Orleans red drum is popular down there. Uh, you'll find they they roast a whole lot of whole red drum. They'll serve they'll serve the fish roasted head on and everything right on the plate right in front of you okay so different types of fish you know we're whole this is a pretty large fish it is we did salmon because it was very popular it's, you know it's one of the more popular um but say you're doing a trout it's only basically the same premises for cleaning it but it's only a foot long as okay. opposed to this right we did right. this because it's very popular it's a nice size but trout um salmon um any type of smaller fish like a white bass or a um even like perch or something like that. Very smaller, very small, a lot smaller fish, but basically fabricated the same, same way. Same thing. Right. Okay. Okay, so one of the easier ways to help you out, especially with starting your first one, you could actually, the, when we started it with the boning knife running down through here, you could actually run down through the whole knife like that. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's going to preserve a lot of the meat also. But what, another way you can do it, especially just starting out to do make your life a lot easier, is basically just start right in the t tail and you see that piece of bone right there that's actually the spine running down through the center okay you want to get down right to there so you want to take that knife and you run it want to run it right onto there and then what you're going to do is you're basically just going to run that up remember keeping the knife pointed at the bone and you're just going to kind of run it up all the way now you see if you feel you're cutting and it's kind of getting stuck, that means you're a little bit too deep into the bone. Okay. So you just want to back it out and then re and then retread. Reposition. Right. Now it's sliding right, right through. So basically, you're just going up. Now, if you do get stuck around the fin or something, there's a little bit of cartilage in there. Again, just back around it. Yeah. And as now that cracking you hear is actually the pin bones that are connected to the spine. That's what we're going to pull Take out with the tweezers, okay. right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So you just run it up to where we made that initial cut and then bam, flip it over. There's your side of salmon. We'll remove a little bit of the belly, some of these uh, pin bones here, and then you'll also have a row of pin bones up there. Okay. 
<laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to flip it over. We're going to remove the other fillet, and then I'll show you guys how to remove some of that inner meat that's still attached to the carcass, where you could throw in salmon cakes or you know some type of baked salmon dish if you wanted to okay. do that. Now, for someone who's doing this for the first time, mm -hmm. how much time should they allot? Um, if you do it the way we just did it, where you're running the knife up the whole way, you really, I mean, technically, you don't have to be, start with these beginning cuts, say the head or the backbone. You can really just take your knife, take both sides off, and, just... and boom, it's done. Okay. He's looking at me. <laughs> You know, again, and it's going to take some force too. You're not gonna, yeah. you're not gonna, you know, whistle right through it. Um, um, but then, you know, like I said, boom, there's the left of the carcass. Not very much meat left. So um, that's what you would use for the sandwich. Right. You'll see a little bit of back here, but like, like this stuff, it's you can't clean it out. It's going to be a little bit of work. But for really what you're going to get off of it after all the work. But basically, if you just wanted to spoon it out a little bit, you'll have okay. some scraps that you can throw in, like I said, in salmon cakes or something like that. But mainly, the rest of it's scrap. You could throw it in a pot of water, make some salmon stock, do whatever you want to do. But for the most part, you know, it's basically just mostly waste. Okay, so now we're left with the two sides. So basically, just to clean these up a little bit. Around where the belly's attached, you'll have the lower fin. Uh, there's going to be some cartilage around this. The belly, uh, the belly is considered a delicacy in a lot of cuisines, especially mm -hmm. Asian mm -hmm. um, salmon belly. is very tender, very fatty, um, so they need to be cooked properly. Um, a lot of people in the U.S. they just discard it. They don't, they don't really care for the texture. Okay. So here you're going to feel some pin bones right here. This is a rib cage down that surrounds the belly. This is where they would take the innards out when they clean it. I see. Yeah. So you can see they're all kind of sticking up right there. So again, we're just going to run a knife on the inside of it. And again, too, keep the blade pointed at the knife. That way you take as less meat as possible. And you're just going to kind of run it until the bones end. Take it off. You can see all the bones in there. And then we'll just remove some of the silver skin from the belly. So I have to ask, why are there no innards in this? Uh, well, when, when, actually, when they killed the fish, they, they immediately removed the guts. Really? Because it, it was a whole fish. It well, just, they... yeah, it was, but the belly was removed. They, 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 they removed the belly as soon as they, uh, as soon as they catch it or process it because the, uh, the, uh, the innards will start to go bad before anything else. They can, they can actually spoil the meat if one of them would rupture or something like that. So they remove them immediately. Okay. I was just wondering. Whether... Yeah. Now, if you were out, say you were up in Erie salmon mm -hmm. fishing, you mm -hmm. would have to do it yourself. You would have yeah. to remove them. But yeah, you definitely want to get those out of there as soon as possible. Now you remove that part of the belly again. You could throw that in the stock. We'll remove this part of the dorsal fin. And again, it's just a lot of cartilage. Taking that off of there. And up here, sometimes that center spine, it will stay attached to some of the meat. So you just gotta kinda shave around it. So we take that off. And then we're pretty much left with a, I would say, 95% clean side. Mm -hmm. uh, we can skin it. Again, if you don't want to skin it, you could leave You could leave the skin on and cut them. However, if you don't, if you want to leave the skin on, you'd have to remove the pin bones first. If okay. you remove the skin first, the pin bones actually come out easier. So oh, it really okay. depends on you. But if you run your finger just above that, the center spot where the spine yeah, was, those are the pin bones. Those were okay. the ones that were cracking as we were cutting cut. through. Mm -hmm. So basically, you just want to take a pair of tweezers, pair of needle nose pliers, whatever, and just pull them out. And they come out pretty much as one. You yes, know, one long one bone. Unit. Like I said, they do come out with the skin attached, but they come out a lot easier with it not attached. Okay. So that's basically doing it there. And then we'll remove the skin. Now again, same premises, always keep the blade away from the meat. So you want to keep it towards the skin, not so firm that you're going to cut through it, but definitely running towards the board. And does it kind of just slide It off kind of guides easily? itself, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. It kind of guides itself. Just run it through. Yeah, there we go. Bam, right off of there. Huh. Make a pair of boots, yeah. whatever you want to do out of it. <laughs> but again, two. 
Again, get back to the now the bones, bones just yeah. kind of slide out. You could leave them in there, just whoever you're serving, let them know that the bones are in there. Uh, a lot of people find them a turn off though, so we remove them. Yeah. Um, now, naturally, if you're serving a whole fish, people are going to expect them, but right. you know, for the most part. And you would move those bones. And then race basically left is, you know, just portioning. Mm -hmm. um, again, you could, if you wanted to do a whole side of salmon, you could throw this on some, uh, you know, on a sheet pan, season it up with some lemon, some dill, salt and pepper, a little bit of white wine, chuck it in the oven, roast it whole. Um, whole sides of salmon are used for making gravel locks, smoked salmon, stuff like that, where they would cure it and then smoke it. Um, okay. So basically, you know, typically we do like four ounce portions for lunch. So you want to mm -hmm. save the end cuts more for your smaller pieces. Okay. Um, you know, the front, the, the uh, toward the head, you know, that could be your smaller cuts, say four ounces, and then your dinner cuts are typically six to seven ounce. So you want to go a little bit bigger. Okay. If you have an ounce scale, it helps out a lot. Um, usually, depending on the size of the salmon, a one, one round, usually around a one inch cut clear across is around a four ounce piece. Usually closer to two ounce, you're getting into your six to seven ounce pieces. So that's a good guesstimation. Cut one, weigh it. If it's a little heavy, you know, to shorten it up a little bit. If it's a little light, you know, to add a little bit more. Uh, the weight will change also depending on the thickness. As you get deeper into the, say, breast of the fish, the meat's going to get thicker. So you might not have to cut them as thick up there as you did, say, toward the tail. Okay. And this is, again, an advantage of doing it yourself. You can Correct. kind of choose. Right. You can pick your sizes. Say you eat salmon twice a week for lunch and you have it for dinner three times a week. You, yeah. you know, you can cut three dinner steaks and two lunch steaks and you got your salmon for the week, you go. one out of each side. Yeah. So that's basically it. Um, again, it's going to take some practice, uh, but once you get down to one or two, you can try smart and starting with some smaller fish. Um, trout are clean, very similar. Trout have pin bones in them as well, so you can practice cutting them on them, but again, very small, but very simple. All right. Okay. And Sounds then the good. last one we'll go next to is the tenderloin right after I wash up. All right, now we're moving on to beef tenderloin, and Chef is going to show us how to efficient, efficiently carve this thing up. Yes, yes, beef tenderloin, um, probably everybody's favorite. Um, this is what you would get your filet mignon out of. Um, they can also be referred to as a pismo, which okay. refers to an abbreviation PSMO, which refers to peeled, which is a layer of fat peeled off of it, side muscle on which is this muscle back here. So that's a pismo peeled side muscle on. That's what they're also referred to. Okay. Um, tech restaurant terms, you say, say when I'm ordering, I need, uh, you know, pismos 10 to 12 count. That would be, you know, roughly 10 to 12 pound pismo. They have eight to 10, you know, varying size, depending on the size of the uh, tenderloin. Um, probably the most bang for your buck that you'll save buying in hull. Um, the salmon, you're going to save some money. The chicken, you're going to save some money. But here, you're probably more towards 4 to $5 a pound buying it whole as opposed to cutting the steaks. Okay. So saving roughly 2 to $4 a pound in that $3 range, in this dollar to $2 range buying it whole, 4 to $6 range buying this whole as opposed to cut steaks. Okay. Okay. So apparently, the tenderloins you're going to get, some of them are going to have different amounts of fat on them. Um, usually, if you buy a choice, it's going to be pretty, pretty nice piece of meat. Now, how does one go about buying a piece like this? Um, you could, you could just order a whole tenderloin. I've also seen them where they sell just the butt ends. It's cut about here. It has the side muscle on, so it's more like a roast. Okay. So you can get a whole pismo, or you can just buy a butt end tenderloin. But okay. it, if you just order a whole beef tenderloin, they'll know what you're, know what you're talking you about. You can come down to Peachins and special yes. order it. Yeah. Okay. You can have it. Actually, we have these on hand. You could just buy the whole thing, uh, or you know, you could say, "I need a whole tenderloin cut into as many six-ounce fillets as you can get, or okay. whatever, you know, depending on how many you order." So we're just going to start with some of the scrap. Um, you will find some silver skin on this. This is a good item to learn how to clean some silver skin. Um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the uh, the side muscle, um, technically the chine. This is where part of it would be connected to the bone. Um, they do leave it attached. Uh, to get a little bit more bang for their money uh, as far as the weight goes, um, but you do want to remove it. There is some scrap meat in it. We'll show you how to clean that up here in a minute, um, but for the most part, you just want to take it off to start with. So basically, like I said, I just kind of ran my fingers out to get it separated. Just going to kind of run a, run your knife down to follow it, and then it's off. Okay. You can go through cleaning it. 
you're like I said, you're going to get some scrap meat off of it, but there is going to be some tendons and some marbling and stuff running through it. So most of the meat is going to come down from the butt end. You see a nice cut there. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, it's just scrap meat. Throw it to save it for your stews, whatever you may, mm -hmm. you may be doing with it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we got that off. Now, what is the silver skin you were talking about? Silver skin is this. Silver skin is attached to the meat, which okay. actually, uh, it's underneath the fat, but it's attached to the meat. Okay. Unfortunately, it doesn't pull off. You have to remove it because oh, it is okay. attached to the muscle. Okay. So here you see a little poke, but the easiest way really to do it is you want to get that knife right under it started. Mm -hmm. I can see And you how can you see right how you lift there. up mm -hmm. on it. So again, just like anything, keep the blade away from the meat and just kind of run it along the silver skin. Now I may cut through, you know, a little bit. It's pretty tough though, yeah. isn't it? The yes, skin. yes, very elastic, very chewy. That's why you want to remove it. Yeah. But just yeah. try, just want to remember, try to keep as much meat attached to the tenderloin as possible. If it does split, yeah. just go back and start another strand. It will fall right off once you get it started. Yeah, you can see your knife just mm -hmm. kind of goes right underneath. Yeah, it just kind of glides right up. But keep it pointed at the silver skin. That way you're removing as much of it with the least amount of meat. And then on some of the outer muscles, you'll find a little bit of scrap fat. Um, some of it will peel off. The silver skin, you can tell because it's real thick. But some mm -hmm. of the layer of fat just kind of sits on there. You can almost just peel it off. Some here on the sides. Just remove it. Now a lot of this stuff will cook up. The silver skin you definitely want to remove um, because it will make it chewy. But mm -hmm. some of the fat will cook up. Okay, then on the bottom next you'll find some of the knuckles. These are these are this is part of the meat that was attached to the bone. Um, you'll kind of see it, you know, little notches. You can actually see where the bones were running, where it was attached to the rib. Okay. Um, so you kind of just want to remove those. You'll see underneath of it a little bit more silver skin. Just kind of remove those. Now again, too, once you get down to these tail ends, you'll notice the meat is very thin. Um, mm -hmm. Your typical filet mignon um, technically should be a center cut, which should only run, say, four or five steaks out of the middle. The end pieces, um, sometimes we'll cut them off. We have a filet sandwich on the lunch menu. Um, it's more of a four ounce piece, so we'll use the tail ends for that. Still very good cut of meat, still just as tender as the center, just doesn't have the body as the center of the cut. So we'll just kind of remove the tails. We'll use these for our filet sandwiches and stuff like okay. that. Okay. A little bit more silver skin up here. A little bit of fat in there where the uh, side muscle attaches to the loin. Now when it comes to that side muscle down on the butt end, um, some people do it different. Some people remove it when they cut their fillets, other people leave them attached. We leave, we leave them attached because again, still a delicious cut of meat and um, you know we can get some pretty nice steaks out of there as well too. You just want to remember to clean out some of that tissue inside the two muscles that join them together, which we'll show you here in a second. Let me just take off a little bit more of this fat. And again too, don't feel like you have to get every little piece off of there. Um, a lot of it will cook up. Just a um, big, the right, just a big of house. It. Just mm -hmm. want to kind of get it real nice and clean. A little bit on this side muscle we'll remove. Okay, so basically we have a nice clean tenderloin there. Now here, like I said, the side muscle, when it adjoins, you will see a little bit of silver skin down in there I in between. See that. So we just want to remove, you know, what's what's there on top. You don't want to take it all out or else the muscle will fall actually fall off. It won't be attached no more. So if you want to get a nice cut steak out of it, you gotta leave a little bit in there. But once it cooks, the amount that's in there, it's uh, not a whole big deal. What really won't affect the steak so you too do, much. So you leave some of the leave some of it in, in there, there to leave it attached. Okay. So this is basically a clean tenderloin, side muscle still on. Again, you could remove it, just hack it up for stew meat. You could actually hack it off, cut it into twos, and just have two random steaks. They're not gonna say sit up as nice, grill up as nice as say the center cuts, 
but the meat quality wise is still just as good mm -hmm. so then basically you have a whole tenderloin uh, a couple different things you could roast it whole like this mm -hmm. uh, we've done a quav roast before where we just roll this in cracked black pepper season it with some salt uh, just roast it in the oven like that we will do them on buffets where we just slice them down and give mm -hmm. them a few pieces at a time or you could roast it whole and cut them into steaks and give them a steak how many people would this serve if you were going to um we're probably going to get roughly i'm going to cut a few six ounce steaks and a few eight ounce steaks just because of the tail ends a little smaller but i would say just eight ounce you're probably getting at least six to eight you okay. know depending on the size of the tenderloin mm -hmm. um roughly eight eight ounce uh, if you were cutting six ounces i'd say seven to ten you know depending so the tenderloin if you're if you're if you're worried about the weight definitely an ounce scale is is is, is a good thing to have um naturally you can see how the, it kind of gets smaller down here so we cut the smaller steaks off of the tail end okay. so six ounce steak you know roughly mm -hmm. you're looking at roughly two inch and a half two inches thick now this is a pretty nice tenderloin, so we really we only got one six ounce off that. So instead of wasting the rest of it, I would cut you know say eight ounces off the rest of okay. it. Okay. Which mm -hmm. again, you're around your two inches thick. You know, again, if you had a scale, cut one, measure it. If it's a little heavy, thin it down a little bit. If it's a little light, go ahead and thicken it up. It's a nice chunk of yes. meat there. These center cuts, uh, fillet's definitely my favorite. Um, no fat, no bone, no mess, no grit, um, just nice, just a nice piece of meat. Naturally, you're going to pay for it um, because it is all meat, um, but definitely worth the, the extra money. And then, like I said, back here where that side muscle is attached, you can see kind of where that muscle mm -hmm. is holding it together. Again, once you cook it, it's really not worth losing that muscle to lose the steak. That little bit is not going to make you be mad at yourself because you didn't take it off. It's definitely worth leaving on there. Let me just trim up a little bit at the end. A little bit more scrap meat. And again, so really some nice seven, seven, eight ounce steaks, eight, eight ounce steaks, one six ounce steak. So really, if you bought these in the, in the grocery store, cut, you're looking at 12, 24, 36, 48, little bit of scrap meat you probably got fifty dollars in buying wow. this cut wow. if you bought the whole tenderloin say they were on sale six seven bucks a pound you got you know 36 bucks in it so or whatever. Saving, yeah. yeah yeah so definitely saving you some money on that aspect wrap them up freeze them if you got a dinner party eight people coming over you got the steaks if you want to wrap them up if you live alone if there's two of you pull out two a night Pull, pull them out the day before they thaw overnight. Now, what do you recommend for when you go to freeze them? Do you wrap them in? Uh, it really depends on paper? length of time. Um, yeah. I usually double up plastic wrap. If you do have some butcher's paper, you can throw a thing on that. Butcher's paper, a, a double plastic wrap, you're going to get a month or two out of it. If okay. you're going to have it in there for, say, six months, you want to put butcher paper on it. That'll keep some of the air out of it as well. Okay. Uh, but definitely a tenderloin. You don't want it in the freezer for a long period of time because it's such a nice cut of meat mm -hmm. as opposed to, say, a roast or a round or something like that. Right. Uh, um, yeah. So definitely fresh yeah. is the best always. But, okay. yeah, you can wrap them up, throw them in a the freezer. Um, just as good when you pull them out. Okay. Okay. All right, Jeff. While well, you've took it, taken us through chicken salmon and then beef so we got we're all covered here um and thanks i think this is really informative for people who've never tried it like myself i've learned a lot That's yes and sure. again too you know like i said at the end you know you're gonna you're gonna have some ups and downs mm -hmm. you're not just gonna go buy a whole salmon and bring right. it home and say look what i know how to do it's gonna take you some practice but you know start with some smaller fish start with some easier cups of meat uh definitely i recommend starting on chicken just to get the feel of the knife run it through be very very careful boning knives are very sharp okay um, you always want to keep the blade running away from your hands uh so say if you're holding it you want to cut away from your hand that way you're not cutting towards and you, the bone will slip it will go through a bone it will go through your finger mm. um, so definitely some dangers but if anybody that's skilled in cooking usually knows how to use a knife so you just just be extra careful okay. um, they do have cut proof gloves if you want to buy one of those oh, okay. um, that can definitely protect you some but just be careful you'll be all right all right chef thank you for taking us through the fabrication of these of these three pieces of meat here mm -hmm. um, save you a little bit of money save you a little bit of uh, effort later on in the week when you're reusing something so thank you chef no and problem. we'll see you next time thanks thank you